Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection, of course. Um, today, again, the theorem from graph theory, the famous Erdős Gabay theorem, which is about realizing graphs. So um, I will explain what it means. It's a very surprising statement. That's why I like it so much in a certain sense. So it kind of says that a graph is determined by a sequence of numbers, which is not really surprising in itself because you can kind of encode everything you want in terms of numbers. But the amount of numbers you need is really, really low. It's, it's kind of those types of statements. It's kind of a bit surprising. Um, so let's have a look. Let's have a look at the setting. So today I'm only going to focus on so-called simple graphs. There are variants of this theorem for other types of graphs, but let's let's the simplest case are the simplest graph. So let's focus on them. So this really means I don't want any loops like in this case here. Um, so simple graph don't have any loops, no loops. And I also don't want any multiple edges. And we will see that this is actually very important. So here, two edges between those two vertices. I don't like that. So here, for example, again, two edges between those two vertices, I don't like that, or it's not part of the definition of a simple graph. So this one is good. So I don't care about embeddings or anything. Those graphs are abstract. This one is good as well. And that's what I'm going to do. So everything I'm going to say is about simple graphs today. And I don't quite know where the name simple comes from, but it kind of just means what I said. There are no parallel edges and there are no loops. And the question I would like to address, or the theorem that I'm going to explain actually addresses, is how much information, right? The sequence of numbers, remember, how much information actually determines whether simple graphs exist in a certain way. Okay, so that's a question I would like to address and stay tuned. The answer is pretty darn amazing. Um, so here is what I need. I need a sequence of numbers and it's really just a sequence of numbers and I have N of them. And n is also the number of vertices on the other side. And this is called, well, the, the sequence I would like to consider are called degree sequences. And that's just a sequence of numbers and it corresponds to the neighbors in the graphs. So those two graphs have the same degree sequence, the one on the right hand side. Why? Because this graph has three neighbors. So we write three. So this graph, well, let me do the, the first one first. Those guys have all two neighbors so we write four times two, um, and this guy, uh, this guy, and this guy, they only have one neighbor. So I write three times one, and let me just change a little bit the coloring here. Um, let me make this green. Okay, and now we can try the same here. This is green, and then we have blue, four of them, and we have uh, the red ones, right? So three of them, and that's really just well, encoded in the sequence on the right-hand side. Note that the sequence is a weaker condition than being uh, the graph because this sequence corresponds to two graphs. Anyway, so this is called a degree sequence and I'm interested in those degree sequence that are graphic. And that means they correspond to a simple graph um, with the, the, no, well, the, the numbers corresponding to the degrees of the vertices. And the real question here that um, the theorem well, today addresses is what kind of condition ensures that such a sequence is graphic, right? So randomly writing down number sequences probably won't get us anywhere, uh, but maybe there's some way of determining what kind of sequences co could correspond to graphs or correspond to graphs. Um, let's see, let's have a look at an example. So you easily find kind of a bound for what is possible by looking at the complete graphs. So here's K7. So K for complete as usual, kind of this mess up K instead of C. Anyway, so the complete graph is really just, uh, seven is just a number of vertices. So if you count here, you get seven. And complete means everything is uh, connected to six neighbors uh, to all of the other vertices. So the degree sequence is uh, boring six, 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 whatever, seven times six, because everything now has six neighbors, right? So this one has six neighbors, six outgoing edges. And since we are restricting to simple graphs, that's where simple comes in, um, there is just no way to put another edge here. There's just, everything already has the maximum number of edges anyway. So there's just no way to put another edge. So as soon as I have a seven in my sequence and just six, 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 I'm kind of dead. The sequence can't correspond to uh, so uh, simple graph. So those sequences can't be 
um, graphic. And note here again that the number of entries is the number of vertices. Of course, I could have a seven, but then I would need more entries, right? So um, in particular, what I'm just saying is graphic implies this bound on uh, on the, the some of the uh, integers that I'm considering here. Why is this bound? Well, let's look at this one. Um, well, seven times six is exactly the number of edges here, and I can't have any more. So why is it seven times six? Well, I have seven vertices, and each one has six outgoing edges. So it's n times n minus one, seven times six. And OK, that condition kind of comes for free. And then it's kind of not so clear what to do with smaller sequences. They might run into trouble. They might maybe don't run into trouble. And it's really unclear whether you can do better than um, this kind of a little bit silly bound that the numbers can't be too big because we are restricting to simple graphs. And at one point, we just can't put any edges anymore. So that's all I'm saying. And it kicks in the theorem, which is an if and only if condition, which basically says the complete graph condition. Uh, that's that's the one I call the one from the last slide. A little bit in a little bit more fancy version is kind of enough. So let me explain. So a, a sequence is graphic if and only if the following happens. There's a handshaking condition, which I will explain on the next slide. It's just saying that the sum is even. We'll see on the next slide but why we want that. And then there is this boundary I've seen before, right? So it was n times n minus 1. But now we do it for all k. So this is supposed to be for all k uh, from 1 to n. So you just check that for all k. Um, there is an error term that you need. Let me know the error term. But basically, you check the complete graph condition for all of those subsequences of your sequence. And that's an if and only if condition. That's pretty good. That's a pretty cool theorem, right? It's it's very, very short. And it says, that's a surprising thing, that a certain just seven that were n numbers in this case are enough to determine whether a graph exists, uh, which is a cool statement because seven numbers are just way, way fewer information than a whole graph. Note again that there are many sequences, so the theorem actually is not constructive in any way. You can have algorithms um, that find graphs associated to degree sequences, but this theorem itself doesn't do that. And it's also only for simple graphs. We've seen that condition simple kicking in in the complete graph condition, right? So if you don't uh, have simple graphs, you kind of need to vary the argument. And yeah, so there are generalizations known. So this is one of the cornerstones, the one of the first theorems in graph theory. And people have generalized that up to a ridiculous point somehow. But I'm not going to discuss that. So um, what I said is, I hope we understand the complete graph condition, which is really just, we can't put any edges anymore. Um, maybe I should explain this one as well. And this one is really simple. It's a so-called handshake lemma, which was essentially known to Euler. Euler very, <laughs> Euler, very impressive. Knew a lot of graph theory, which uh, before graph theory was actually, strictly speaking, invented. Anyway, it's this handshaking lemma that just says, well, mathematically speaking, it just says the sum of the degrees is even two times the number of edges. That's an even number in a more uh, kind of common language. It says if you have a certain number of persons and the certain number of persons shake hands, right? This this guy, this person here shakes hands with this person. Um, then, well, this one shakes a hand. This one shakes a hand. So you always get something even because everyone shakes a hand. Uh, so that, that, that's basically what it is, right? So the degree of this person here would be three, for example. Uh, but it's, it, it implies that, the well, not just this person shakes three hands, but there will be three other handshakes in this guy, but in this case, by this person, this person, and the other one from down here. So it's very easy to prove that this, uh, the number of the, the, the sum is always even. And... Okay, this gives us kind of this handshake condition for free. We definitely need that because we want to realize something as a graph. And every graph, absolutely every simple graph, um, has this condition. So we just add it. So that is kind of easy, and you get it almost immediately if you think about if you would have to think about the theorem yourself, you come up with this very quickly. The other one is a little bit more subtle and actually really the main point. Um, in particular, that you can really now construct and using this condition, you can really construct uh, the corresponding simple graphs. 
Okay, so what I explained today is kind of this idea that um, maybe a graph is too much information and there's a fewer, uh, smaller number of information, smaller information package that you can find that determines a graph, which is kind of a classical type of question in graph theory, which goes under the slogan graph realization the graph realization problem, kind of how much information is needed to be sure that there will be some graph. And I find this theorem very impressive. It's an if and only if theorem. And it kind of says that a certain type of numbers, that's enough to determine a graph or determine the existence of a graph. Remember that you could have many graphs for the same sequence. That's why I like it so much. It's kind of a little bit surprising that so few information is actually um, uh, needed to determine whether a graph exists, right? R think of like having 100 vertices, then you can have got knows how many edges, but you only need 100 integers with a certain condition to determine existence. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.